if you own Microsoft Office, you probably already use Microsoft Word for your word processing. You probably use it for writing research reports, typing love letters, and doing statistics homework, which is like writing a love letter to science. Many people use Excel for data entry and data cleaning, and SPSS is used for statistical analysis. So of course, Word is used for word processing, which means presenting your findings to your professor, or even better, for publication. In our last lesson, we imported data from Excel into SPSS. Now, we will run a simple analysis in SPSS and export that output to Microsoft Word. So at this point, we have the data from our statistics students' quiz scores in SPSS ready to analyze. We will create a table with numbers and a graph. We'll export them to Word and then do some cleaning of the output. The quiz scores dataset should now open in SPSS as a new SPSS dataset. The dataset contains one variable called quiz scores. In order to have some output to export to Word, we will run a simple analysis of this variable. We will calculate a five-number summary and a histogram for these data. Begin with the drop-down menu. Select Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Frequencies. Move the quiz scores variable into the variables window. Click on Statistics. Under Percentile Values, select Quartiles. Under Central Tendency, select Mean, Median, and Mode. Under Dispersion, select Standard Deviation, Minimum, and Maximum. And now click Continue. Next, click on Charts. Select Histogram and then click Show Normal Curve on Histogram. Click Continue, and now click OK. A new output viewer window will open. Now that we have our output, we are ready to export it to Word. You have a table with numbers and a graph, the histogram, which is a picture. Let's look at the output a little bit. We can see that the mean is just over 24. The median is 25, and the mode is also 25. We know that in a normal distribution, the mean, median, and mode are the same. So we suspect that this is probably a normal distribution. To be safe, we should also look at the skewness and kurtosis to ensure that they're both between positive and negative one. That means I need to run another analysis and get a little more information. To do that, let me show you another trick in SPSS. As before, select Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Frequencies. Notice that the settings from your previous analysis have not changed. If we click OK, we would get exactly the same output as last time. Uncheck the box Display Frequency Tables. We don't need that now. Now instead of clicking OK, click the Paste button. A syntax window will open with the syntax or the computer code that would run this analysis. Notice this line that says statistics. These are the descriptive statistics we asked for with the drop-down menus. But I also wanted to get the skewness and kurtosis, so let's edit the syntax. Just type the word skewness, space, kurtosis. And that is how you write code in SPSS. In order to run the analysis, highlight the part of the code that you want to run, and click the green triangle. As before, we get output. And this time, it has those additional analyses that we asked for using the syntax. It is not important right now that you can interpret the output, but feel free to look at it a little bit to see what is there. Our goal is to get this output into Microsoft Word so that we can edit it. 
This is also a good way to save a usable copy of the output if you do not have SPSS on your home computer. You may run your analysis at the school computer lab, then export to Word and take it home so that you could work on it there. The next steps will work to export both kinds of SPSS output, both tables and figures. First, save the output as an SPSS output file. Click right here. Always nice to have a copy of the original output. Now, of course, this file can only be opened in SPSS, and I promise to show you how to get it into Microsoft Word. So in the output window, you can export SPSS output directly into Microsoft Word using the command File Export. Although I prefer to use this icon that will do exactly the same thing. You must have the output window active for this to work. If you see the command export to database, then you need to click on the output window to bring it to the front. Make sure that type is set to word slash RTF or dot doc. Notice that by default, the file will be saved to your documents folder. I want to put this output on my desktop. So I click, type, and select desktop. I also want to change the name of the document. I click here and type practice output. Click OK. On my desktop, I see practice output. Double click to open it in Word. Now here's something else that will help. The document is in an RTF format. Now, personally, I prefer to work in the native docx format if I'm using Microsoft Word. So I choose Save As, I select Word Document, and Save. After that, I will discard the old version and keep the new one. Now we can format the output. You can format your output in any way that you like in Word. You can change the font the size, the margins, edit the tables, anything you like. And of course, you can cut and paste from this document into another Word document, such as your statistics homework. Generally, as I clean the data, I like to select all and then single space. I usually delete the notes table. It just isn't necessary. Keep the syntax if you choose. And your instructor may want you to submit the output so that he or she can see the syntax or the file pathways. So leave those in place for now. This is when you can resize the figure. This is also when I would edit the table if I was going to use it. You can format the table here or in Excel if you choose. The most important thing to know about formatting is that SPSS does not create output that is formatted in APA style. Before you can use this output in an APA publication or for your statistics class, you must reformat it into an APA style table. I have other videos that show you how to format tables and other output in APA style.